great pleasure to introduce you to Andy Shalom. Yeah! Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jim. And, uh, and Ken, where's Ken Grossinger? He's there. They are co-chairs for finance uh, in this uh, race. And I want to thank the, the rest of our team, Bob Bellencamp and his amazing wife, Karen Ackerman, and Cole, and Jeff Millard, and Diane White, and I know I'm Alan. leaving out, Alan. and Alan, Alan Rosenblatt, and Joy Zaremka, of course, Joy. Joy is the quiet storm. She works from behind the scenes. It's great to have her on, on board. And so many of you, really, every single one of you is obviously uh, part of this campaign, and I look forward to working with, with all of you. Um, I'm running, uh, and of course, <laughs> well, I'm, the, the, the owner of this amazing place, I'm on, hello, I'm on, how are you doing? My brother in, in, uh, in the struggle, he's part of Think Local First DC, it's always been, uh, I think one of the best things about, about having an organization like Think Local First DC is meeting people like I'm on and others who have made the city so exciting and so uh, vibrant. So it's really wonderful to have you on board, and uh, and the lamb. Hey, you know. Lamb's for you. <laughs> so I look around this city, and I think we can do better. That's why I'm running for mayor. I'm running for mayor because I do see the city becoming more and more divided. It's like two separate, unequal cities, and I've been traveling all over and seeing that. I believe for too many, the dream has been deferred. The dream that all of us, I think, in this room have a dream where a city where you can work, live, and prosper. This is the kind of city I dream about, and I hope it's the kind of city you all dream about as well. And I don't think we can realize this dream with the current crop of uh, career politicians or business as usual. So that's why I'm running for mayor. As Jim said, I'm the owner of Busboys and Poets, and many of you know that Busboys and Poets was named after the great African-American poet Langston Hughes, who lived here in the early part of the 20th century and was, uh, was known as the great poet of the Harlem Renaissance. And I think it's time for a DC renaissance and new leadership, don't you? Yes. Yeah. 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 I think, again, I think we could do so much better. We can't have a great city when one out of three children in the city is going without. You know, kids that live in poverty have one in 20 chance of succeeding. They have far more chances of drug addiction, far more chances of psychological trauma, and disease, and they're sure to end up somewhere in prison, somewhere along the way. That's not a good thing for the city. I think we can do better, don't you? I think you can't have a great city when you have one out of five people in the city living in poverty. That's the statistics. One out of five people in the entire city lives in poverty. 62% of kids drop out of school sometimes in some of the schools here before they finish high school. That's our collective failure. I think we can do better. I'm running for mayor for this city because I believe that we can have jobs that actually translate to the people that need them. That we can have jobs that are created from small entrepreneurs and small startup businesses. That we can have economic <laughs> development that translates into economic prosperity. And instead of always looking up and counting cranes, we need to look forward and count the things that matter. I think we can have affordable housing for the majority of the people in this city, and not just for the few. You all know what I'm talking about. I think we can become a world-class city where the arts and culture are everywhere. Dollar for dollar, arts and culture bring more economic development than anything else. I know that. We need to have a great city by tackling the very issue of poverty. And instead of going out every Thanksgiving and handing out turkeys, we have to ask, why do we have to do that every year? Yeah. And why are the same people coming back and standing in line again and again? There's something wrong with this picture. I really think we can do better. I think we can do better. We have, our schools are rated at the very bottom of all the matrix. Parents have to go shopping every single year for a school. Parents don't need to have that kind of choice. They want great schools in their own neighborhoods. That's what they want. They don't want school closings every other day. They don't want to have to go and shop for a school every year for their kid. They want to have community schools that are vibrant, that are great, that are exciting for learning. I believe that. We've gone from the Bush era of no child left behind to the re-era of no kid left untested to the current era 
of, of, of no teacher left unstressed. And I've been talking to a lot of teachers, and they are stressed to the max, and you can't teach when you're living in fear and insecurity for your job. That's a problem. I think we can do better. I really do. I've been working in this city for a long time. Over 25 years, I've had business in the city. I've shown that I could lead and succeed. I've developed my business from almost nothing to a multi-million dollar corporation with over 500 jobs, as Jim mentioned. Many of them. Decent wages, great benefits, and we have sick leave for all. So while they're negotiating this issue over at City Hall, we've already been doing it for many, many years. I'm the only person in this race that has actually signed paychecks, balanced budgets, yeah. and lost sleep overnight because I wanted to make sure that I could pay my, you know, the people that work with me. I'm the only person in this race that actually has done that. I was one of the founders of Think Local First DC. Many of you are members of that here. It's the largest local independent business association. It's great, it's been wonderful. Where's Stacy? Why isn't Stacy here? That's what I need to know, <laughs> all right? This is, a, this is really exciting. We're at an at a exciting time. I was one of the ones that led the charge to get all kinds of wind energy in all kinds of places here in the city. That was great. We, had, we started out with a couple of restaurants. We ended up with 26 restaurants. And now there are a gazillion places that have wind energy. Suddenly, it's cool and hip. I think in this election, it's a pretty clear choice. I'm the only person that will tackle these issues of race and inequality. It's an important issue. It's the issue of our time, I think. In this, in this race, you have a choice between electing career politicians that need a job or, or, or someone like me with a vision, really, to unite the city, to bring it together, to embrace this diversity and the strength of it, to make it an exciting city. I want Washington, D.C. to not just be the capital of this country, but the capital of the quality of life of this country. Yeah. We can do better. This is a great city, and we have to embrace our greatness. I want the city to be a place where the arts are vibrant and exciting, where communities are, 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 are diverse and loving, where, where streets are clean and safe, where schools are second to none. I won't stop doing that. I won't stop realizing this dream because I think this has been a dream that's been deferred for too long and we can't defer it for another year, for another election, or for another generation. I look forward to working with all of you to make this dream possible. Thank you. We'll take a, a 